Well, welcome to our seminar. In today's talk, we're going to talk about how to overcome the yield gap in no-till and corn following cover crops. By introduction, my name is Scott Nelson. I'm a research agronomist with the Iowa Soybean Association Research Center for Farming Innovation. Our agenda today, this is going to be a little longer talk than you're used to, about 15 minutes. And what we're going to talk, cover today is why care about cover crops and no-till, the importance of end form and placement in no-till and cover crops. And then I'm gonna review for you two studies, a small plot research and an on-farm research study. And then we'll conclude with some conclusions and recommendations. So why care about cover crops and no-till? Here's an example from an area in Northwest Iowa. This is the cropping district number one in Iowa. And you can see uh, in this cropping district, the average nitrogen yield or nitrogen loss from uh, going in from fields going into tile lines is about 17 and a half pounds per acre per year. And I thought that was, uh, that seems pretty small and seems like a good number. It doesn't seem like a lot of lost uh, nutrients being lost in there in our ecosystem up there. But then I did some calculations. And if you calculate that all that nitrogen loss, that 17 and a half pounds, what that equates to is 19,000 ammonia tanks lost, if there are 1,000 gallon tanks, or 665 rail cars of urea. If you figure, let's just say the ag contribution is, is half of this and half is mineralization, then let's assume that 9,500 ammonia tanks are lost due to ag and 333 rail cars lost of wasted nutrients in our crop production systems. That equates to a rate of nitrogen, this rate of nitrogen loss equates to about $4.3 billion in wasted nutrients that we could be using in our farm ground and improving our productivity. Why that matters is that cover crops can improve water quality substantially and can retain those nutrients that are being lost in our in our agro ecosystems in, in this area and across the across the state. And this is a from a five year study. This is data comparing um, nitrogen loss in a tile line in parts per million. You can see with no cover crop we had 12 parts per million and and with uh, with the cover crop we had six parts per million lost of, of lost nutrients. If you do total nitrogen load or total nitrogen yield, that equates to about 40 pounds in this study, there were 40 pounds of nitrogen per acre lost to crop production in the no cover crop and about 21 pounds lost to production in the cover crop scenario. So what we're saying is that cover crops are important in that they can retain nutrients that are lost to production into your, in your corn fields. And that can matter a lot for your economics. Another reason why is, is we all know this, is that cover crops and no-till do an excellent job in reducing soil erosion and improving soil health. In this picture I'm showing you, this is a no-till field actually in a very wet spring. And you can see that even the no-till wasn't enough to prevent erosion in this, in this field. Cover crops can synergize with no-till to really reduce erosion and improve your soil health. So why, why do we care about cover crops and, uh, and no-till is, well, there, did, we know that there are many agronomic challenges to no-till and cover crops, but society is looking us, to us to fix these challenges as well as to improve our own profitability. Here's a study we conducted. Uh, this is an ISA study from a long-term study where we're, where we're comparing um, corn fall and cover crop trials. And you can see um, this red line is the um, is the uh, is zero difference. And what we're showing you is the the yield advantage yield advantage or disadvantage to cover crops. And you can see that in in our study, some of these locations we had a negative yield response or even a, a marginal positive response, but it was mostly negative. And so what we're looking for to do at the Center for Research for for the Research Center for Farming Innovation is find ways to realize a yield increase from the use of cover crops and corn production. And we think we can do that because of this data. 
This is from a study published by Iowa State University. And what it's comparing is soil moisture by day of the year in a cover crop situation. And on the y-axis is seven meters of water, of soil water in storage. And what I want you to notice is that <clears throat> as we get out beyond 200 days in the crop year, that's getting into June, July, and August, you can see that cover crops have more soil moisture. In a cover crop system, there's more soil moisture than in a no cover crop system. And that's because cover crops establish root channels that allow water, greater water infiltration. So we, we have an opportunity, if we have more soil moisture, we have an opportunity to increase yield in our crops if we can manage things well. There is an opportunity that we can increase yield in a cover crop or no-till situation. So I'm gonna switch now and just talk a little bit about what my view is, is one of the problems with no-till and in cover crop situation is the nitrogen problem. Nitrogen form and placement must be different in no-till and when following cover crops. And I'm going to re review some studies that were published that, that kind of give you an understanding of what's going on. The first thing to understand is that there's an enzyme called urease in your soil. And what that does is that cleaves urea containing fertilizers like urea or urea ammonia nitrate. It cleaves it into uh, nitrogen gas. And, and that nitrogen gas is lost in crop production. And what I want you to notice here, this is the concentration of urease enzyme on the y-axis. And these are different soils on the, on the x-axis. What I want you to notice is that in a no-till soil, there's a lot more ure urease enzyme in the, uh, in the profile compared to the, the tilled soil. So what this means is, and a lot of guys have done this, They've tried no-till and they've, uh, they've sprayed urea on top of the soil and they've realized the yield loss due to their, and they blame that on no-till. Well, actually what's going on is you have more urease enzyme in the soil and that's uh, breaking down your form of nitrogen and, uh, and you're losing it to crop production. It's not necessarily the no-till system, it's the nitrogen management in the system due to the presence of the urease enzyme. Here's a, here's a no-till corn study that was published in the Agronomy Journal. And um, this is an older study, so the yield levels are a little bit lower. But what I want you to notice is that uh, ammonia nitrate form of nitrogen had the highest yield in a no-till corn study. Where they used urea, there was almost a 60, 70 bushel yield disadvantage due to the presence of the ureus enzyme cleaving up the fertilizer. If you used a nitrogen stabilizer, as in this study, there was a 35 bushel yield advantage to using agrotane in this study, but it still didn't get us up to the level of ammonia nitrate. There was still some nitrogen loss in this study. Here's another study um, uh, comparing no-till, nitrogen form and placement in no-till. And I, I bridge these, these studies to cover crops in that what, what is a cover crop system? It's basically a no-till with more residue. So these studies are very relevant, relevant both to no-till and to cover crop situations in corn production. Again, this is an older study, so the yield levels are kind of low, but you see the same trend. Ammonia nitrate was the highest yielding. Urea was the second highest loading. And, a, and, and urea ammonia nitrate was the lowest yielding plot in this study. Now in no-till situations or in cover crop situations, a lot of times farmers will wanna apply UAN with their burn down treatment. And uh, according to this study and other studies that I've seen in practical experience, you can be at a yield disadvantage if you use only UAN solution as your burn down nitrogen source, you can be at a significant yield disadvantage just due to your form of nitrogen. So a lot of guys have tried no-till in the past, They've sprayed UAN solution on the, on the field and they, and they blame no-till or cover crops for their yield loss, when re in reality, it was just a form of nitrogen that they were using in their placement. Here's another study. This is just recently reported. And uh, they compared, in a, and this is nitrogen form in a no-till system in corn. They used urea ammonia nitrate where they knifed it in. They used urea ammonia nitrate where they applied an inhibitor and they knifed it in. 
and those and that was a slightly higher yielding than the UAN knife only. They strained urea in a stream and and see what happened with the UAN. They they lost almost 40 bushels just due to the use of UAN applying it to the soil surface and not getting it into the soil. When they used an inhibitor in a stream situation, you can see that they they dramatically increased their nitrate their their yield, but it still wasn't equal to getting UAN knifed into the soil. So again, in a no-till situation, getting if you're using liquid fertilizer like UAN, getting that knifed into the soil or getting it into the soil surface is a is a definitely a good practice. The one thing that we have going against us with cover crops is, is that they do their job in that they sequester nitrate. And this is a study um, comparing no cover crop versus uh, rye cover crop. And this is the amount of nitrate in the soil profile during early seed yield formation stages. And notice that, that um, the amount of nitrate available to the crop in a cover crop situation is about half to even greater in a, in a cover crop situation. And what this means is that there's less nitrate available during early season yield formation in a cover crop system. And that could be why sometimes we see the yield gap in a, in a corn fall and cover crop situation. Okay, so with that said, with, the, with that knowledge, based in that literature review, we set up a study where we wanted to understand different nitrogen formant placement in a cover crop situation. And here's a picture of the trial by Clary in Iowa. And you can see uh, we got very good rye cover crop biomass in 2020. Um, I threatened to not pay the bill for this study because I thought they let the rye get too large. And actually in there, there's uh, two leaf corn in, the, in that mass but it turned out to be a very interesting study. So our hypothesis was, was that corn yield will increase if 30 to 50% of the total season nitrogen is applied at or before planting and before the V6 growth stage. What we wanted to do was overcome that sequestering of, of nitrate that cover crops do during, with, with more fertilizer in the nitrate form during that yield formation stage. So our treatment for this study were, were the following. Now note that all nitrogen rates in our treatments were equal. And so what we compared was a no cover crop with 150 pounds of nitrogen as fall anhydrous. We had a cover crop comparison with 150 pounds nitrogen fall anhydrous. This is a cover crop, no cover crop comparison. We had cover crop with 150 pounds of spring anhydrous. We had cover crop with 100, 100 pounds of fall anhydrous with 50 pounds nitrogen as starter. That was applied two by two. And then we had these other treatments where, where we applied 100 pounds of spring anhydrous and we knifed in 50 pounds of nitrogen as UAN in, in an early side dress. And the final treatment of interest was we applied 50 pounds in the spring as anhydrous and then we applied 100 pounds of nitrogen broadcast right after planting as urea plus ammonia sulfate. These are a lot of treatments for you to think through, but I'll, I'll talk you through them as we, as we go through this, this result. Now, weather at this site was, uh, was very dry, and you can see um, in the blue is, was our actual rainfall, and the red line is a 20-year average. So we had this area was encountered some drought stress. In this study, harvest stands were equal. You remember when I showed you that picture of all that, all that biomass? Well, actually treatment one is the no cover crop comparison and treatments two to eight all had cover crops. And notice that there was very little difference in stand establishment. So even though we, we had that large amount of biomass, we still got good corn stands. So getting to the results, these are the results, and I want to set this up. On the y-axis is, is yield, and on the um, uh, x-axis is treatments. So treatment one was no cover crop comparison, and I should say that these, these uh, dark black lines in the middle of the boxes are the, uh, are the median or the mean of the treatments. These were replicated six times. 
And the, the whiskers in the box just gives you an idea of how much variation there is around that mean. So what I want you to notice is that there was no treatment two was, was uh, fall applied anhydrous with cover crops and treatment one was fall applied anhydrous with no cover crop. And there was a slight advantage to cover crops, but not very significant. In treatment three was spring applied ammonia with cover crop. But what I want you to notice is that is treatment number um, treatment number four. This is with the starter application as two by two. And notice that it was the 20 bushels higher yielding than the no cover crop comparison. Now, uh, a lot of farmers will object to these higher rates of starter. 50 pounds is, is a lot of, uh, of UAN or a lot of tank filling and, and it can slow you down during planting. And for some farmers, this doesn't work. What I thought was very interesting was this treatment here, the broadcast stabilized urea with AMS. Now that's a very convenient uh, system for a farmer where, where they would plant the crop and then broadcast urea over the top or, or pre-plant broadcast urea, stabilize urea with AMS. And notice that the yield difference between the starter application and the broadcast U, uh, urea with AMS was, was about the same. And again, these, all these treatments have the same amount of nitrogen. Equally interesting was this treatment number five where they knifed in for early side dress applied UAN at the, at, B, at the V2 to V4 growth stage. And while that wasn't as high yielding as, as the 50 pound starter application, that's still a, it was higher yielding than the no cover crop comparison. And that's a very convenient way for farmers to manage. So now we also, I want to transition now, we also had some on-farm trials in, along this same uh, concept. And these were conducted in a no-till system. <clears throat> now in this trial, we fall seeded cereal rye, but we had low biomass. So I think of this trial as just a, a, a no-till type trial. And our treatments were this, we had two treatments in a large scale field length uh, on-farm research. We had side dress 50 pounds of nitrogen as anhydrous ammonia at the V6 growth stage. That is the farmer's standard way of managing his, uh, his crop. And below this, he had 100 pounds of fall anhydrous supply. The suggested practice or the improved practice that we tried was after planting, instead of side dressing 50 pounds of anhydrous, he broadcast stabilize urea plus AMS to give us 50 pounds of N and 20 pounds of starter. Here's a beauty shot of the treatments. On the left is the broadcast. This is uh, right at the time of side dress and anhydrous ammonia, these, these photos were taken. On the left is the picture of the uh, urea AMS combination applied pre-plant or post-planting. And then the, on the right is plants from the, uh, the check scenario where, where the farmer standard practice where he just side dresses a, a, um, ammonia at the V6 stage. He did this in two fields and here's the results from the first field. His standard practice at V6 growth stage was 168 bushels. Remember this was a dry location and, and we didn't have a lot of rainfall so yields were suppressed. With pre-plant in or broadcast urea ammonia nitrate or ammonia sulfate, you can see he, he realized 180 bushels. So there's almost a 12 bushel yield advantage in this field for um, applying nitrate or applying a nitrogen form that's readily available to the crop during early yield formation stages. Here's the second location that this farm conducted. And here we see a 10 bushel yield advantage between the the V6 side dress and an early season nitrogen application that assures enough nitrate available to the crop during yield formation stages. This, is, this was not a nitrogen comparison, but this is from a, a, a long-term cover crop, no cover crop comparison. And in this field, the farmer routinely broadcasts urea, stabilized urea right after planting. And you can see the differences between the cover crop and the untreated or the no cover crop was about 11 bushels. So you can see here that, that um, cover crop systems and corn can yield higher than the no cover crop system if the nitrogen is managed well or managed differently. 
Now, all my life, I've been told by farmers, no till, no yield, but I'm becoming of the belief that we can have no till and more yield. So here's some recommendations for, for why we would have no till, uh, for making a no till and corn fall and cover crops work. Here would be my recommendations for a nitrogen program, where you would want 30 to 50% of your total nitrogen as a nitrate form at or soon after planting. You want like a urea or a knifed in urea or a starter application. The urea rapidly trans, um, converts to nitrate if we get rainfall. Some suggested methods of doing this would be to start or apply nitrogen, 30 to 50 pounds of nitrogen in a two by O or two by two system, 10 to 15 gallons at 32%. If that doesn't work for you, you don't have starter on your planter or you don't want to stop and fill all the time, you can coulter inject UAN at pre-plant or early side dress, B2 to B4 stages. And um, at least in, in 2020 research, based on this, you can broadcast a blend of stabilized urea. And I, and I want to underline and underscore, we need stabilized urea plus AMS soon after planting. And I will say again that studies have shown urea, urea ammonia nitrate broadcast with the burn down is less effective uh, way of managing nitrogen in a no-till and cover crop system. Here's one farmer that has a lot of experience with his with uh, making cover crops work. And this is his program. I don't necessarily agree with it, but this is what he's doing. And again, he uses the burn down. He uses eight and a half gallons of 32% with one and a half gallons of ATS. Based on my work, I would say that this is maybe a wasted application, but he applies um, 6.5 um, gallons of 32% with two gallons of 1034 with a gallon and a half of ATS. And then what's really, I think is making his system work is he's side dressing before V4, 25 to 30 gallons at 32%. And that's, he's getting 240 bushel yields on 150 pounds of nitrogen. Now, soil cover crops don't work for everyone in, in some cases on very poorly drained soils. A lot of farmers have, have gone with to strip till with cover crops. And this system can work, work very well on poorly drained soils. But again, we think you can make no-till cover crops work just as well. So in review, there are many agronomic challenges to cover crops and no-till. We haven't figured them all out, but society is looking for us to fix these challenges. I can show you university research that shows uh, mold bore plowing gives you the highest yield, but nobody mold bore plows anymore because that's just unacceptable due to the erosion. And so, you know, societal changes are looking more and more that we need to change and fix our system as a society becomes less tolerant of soil erosion. And simple changes in nitrogen form and placement can significantly increase yield in these systems of cover crops and no-till. Finally, I'd like to ask you, uh, work with us. If you have ideas or you want to try these some of these treatments in your own farm, please contact us at this address. And thank you again for listening and uh, looking forward to you having a profitable spring.